this golden to equation, this is example. Right, point two, point two, the other the trust, the other two in Laplacian psi to the equal wave function. Let's see. V a potential as a function of all the spatial spatial coordinate in similarly equals to energy sign. So when you are in this sort of office, you already learned that this is so called energy independent scoring the equation, otherwise that is actually the time due to right right functions. Okay. Now the idea is uh, change it to a Helmholtz equation. The Helmholtz equation involves uh, the Laplacian plus K squared. Okay. And so well, obviously the first thing you can do because uh, you, you have already have a Laplacian and you have all these uh, coefficients in front, so you might as well just modify it. Uh, what divide the whole equation by this coefficient so it uh, make it becomes a minus two m e minus two m e plus square sine and how much equation has a k square K square term, Laplacian plus K square. You have a minus uh, coefficient. Uh, obviously, uh, you can treat it as K square, it's 2ME over H bar square as a K square. The only problem is that the E can be negative. Then uh, the K square becomes uh, becomes actually uh, K become imagined. But, uh, Assuming if K E is positive or uh, we generalize the solution with imaginary K. Uh, so but uh, we'll we'll do that anyway. So treat this as K square. So, let's see. It's K square. Let's see. Now the, move that to the left hand side, this becomes two M B. And this is a function of x, and now k squared is just one. Okay, and the first thing is fine. Then then you can use the. This is now in, in the in the form of a. M hot uh, equation or M hot operator. This is and the right hand side has, has a actually I forgot the size. This is uh, okay. The right hand side is uh, is uh, not is non zero and the right hand side is zero. This is the M hot equation and you uh, obviously you talk about constructing the green function using the homogeneous solution and that exactly what uh, what was done, but. Uh, But at the at, at it's at uh, in the form that you can solve by the green function, except that uh, because uh, the right hand side also depends on psi, then you have a problem that even if you are applying the the green function, right? Uh, but you can write down the formula what the solution is. So, uh, so this is. Well, all we have to use all will be like the, I'm looking for the, the exact exact uh, convention how the text use a 3D in function because uh, I mean that we, we have a constant we change a constant. Uh, Uh, 
Simple. Yeah, yeah, in this form, uh, number two, ten, second number two, there's a green function times the, the homo, in homogeneous term and integrate over square. So that is uh, the green function. Oh, oh, oh. And the right hand side, the function is two, um, oh, 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 oh. Square. So that's the inhomogeneous term. Okay. And so that the formula is the solution. Yeah. The only problem is that uh, you sign in the integral also. So this make it uh, instead of a solution, explicit solution, this becomes an integral equation. All right. So uh, let me write down the screen function. The screen function from the table. Ten point one is this is in three D assuming in three D. Look at the three D case it's minus exponential function on times k. All right, so that's uh, that's the green function. Now the there's a the subtlety that the k has to be real and cannot be imaginary. You can see from here if it is imaginary, then you have an i here. The i times i is or i or minus i, so you have a plus or minus exponential term and. You need to be careful not to take the term, <laughs> otherwise it grow up the, in, when the integration. So that becomes a, what we call the modified tempered operator. And we got the next column in table ten point one. So assuming that the k is real or this e is positive, then you can you can use that. Otherwise, you, you need to be a little careful uh, using this green function. Okay, but so going back to this integral, this is up to here is an integral equation. Okay, and uh, the way to solve this integral equation, uh, I mean, there are different ways to solve it. Um, one, the simplest way to, to do that is uh, the so called uh, uh, bond approximation. Uh, uh, Basically, it's a perturbation network, a perturbation solution. Okay, so basically, assume that uh, you assume psi, uh, as you have a zero order term i k sub zero. Okay, and then plus the first order term. And in this case, it's uh, given by this. That's all. That's okay. Yeah. That depends on angle. Angle phi. Divided by I. Divided by I. Okay. Um. Now you. Uh, You put this into here, right? And put this into here. Um, this is a perturbation, so it, and you assume that uh, now you, you're talking about physics, but mathematics. So you assume that V is some kind of uh, a localized potential. Um, so, um, say like a charge or something like that, then uh, it has an influence over a certain distance. 
So that I guess it has a potential V. And suppose oh, this is supposed to be a three dimensional space. And now you're looking for a solution, a so called scattering solution. So basically, input a, a wave. In that case, uh, this is just like a particle, but the particle in quantum mechanics treated like like a wave, and this wave in wave wave function, right? So, so like a particle interact with uh, a potential. So this particle is inputting as a uh, in common wave. In co if this is a like pain wave or what? Pain wave solution. Please see that one. Um, this propagation direction is the direction of this uh, wave vector in case of C, in this direction is case of C. Okay. And now after the, this is incoming, so supposedly at uh, far away from the potential is, is given by this solution. But then uh, after you interact with the, the potential, it also produce uh, some scatter wave. So the scatter wave scatters in all directions, but supposedly not uh, in an isotropic way. So it not just depends on the distance from the center of the potential, it also depends on the angle. So, so whatever the uh, angle you have, uh, say, phase of phi, or whatever you define the phi angle. So like using a spherical coordinate, you define it as a phi, theta and phi. So, so that uh, um, there's an out, outgoing wave, an outgoing wave far away from it, uh, far away from the potential. You have the I K R because K, assuming it's propagating outwards, so K is in the radial direction, so K dot R. The dot product becomes the wave number times the radial coordinate. And it's a spherical wave. So it's a, the, the conservation of, of probability will require that, that the amplitude is proportional to 1 over R. Okay. And so that the, uh, another thing is that is the, you know that the probability has to be integrate to one and so you cannot when you integrate over all speed you grow up. So it, it has to go to zero somewhere. I mean at, at far away from the, the center. So this is a uh, outgoing spherical wave, but then modified by the angular dependence of this F. That depends on theta and phi also depends on whatever the K that is uh, you know, the outgoing wave number. Okay, so that's uh, that's this form. So and so the total side is the incoming one plus the outgoing one, the scattering. Okay, and obviously this is an approximation. The form may be more. Complicated, and then after you, if you actually solve this whole uh, differential equation or uh, integral equation, the form might not actually be describable from just these two terms. You might have more terms and all kinds of uh, complicated uh, things. But this is, uh, you know, assume uh, if, if the, the idea is that the scatter wave is not too strong, so mainly is the incoming wave, but some of them scatter, scatter away. So you, uh, you can apply the perturbation to, to, to treat the to integral part, integral solution, the integral equation. Okay, so uh, the idea is to put that into here. But then you put it on the both the left hand side and the right hand side. But uh, this green function is uh, integrating the potential. So we assume the potential is not strong enough. So assuming that is like a perturbation. So uh, when you integrate involving V, 
And when psi subscript into here, so you only keep the leading order term uh, instead of the that uh, sec first order term. The first order term multiplied by V, you can consider that as a second order because both are assumed to be small. So when you put the inside the integral, you keep only the leading order, but then uh, you put on the left hand side, you keep both of them. Okay, so that's that's the idea. So that will allow you. So like this, this will be your left hand side, right? And then uh, what we need to do is uh, substitute substitute the, the rest. Just just this in here. And see if we can do this in. Okay. Um, the idea is. Uh, so. This is here, right? We have T minus minus one. So that's the green function. And then uh, we have this uh, two pi n. Uh, two m, the two pi, two m v. That's a function of time. This potential, and then we we'll multiply, uh, multiply by f. Uh, that's the first term. We get and that is uh, also depends on our points of this. Okay. Um, so uh, All right. Now we need to. Um, I mean, that see if we can actually. This is this becomes like a. a uh, like a spatial Fourier transform. You know, we have this uh, exponential function. This this whatever the v is, and then uh, modified by this. Uh, this factor um, to a uh, we transform that way. And well the West is would be depends on we this this the square function we list in this example. Well it seems like that this example is just giving you the Hamhoff approximation not not trying to integrate what V is, right? Do you, you see anything? It doesn't talk about we, what V is, right? Like the, like the Coulomb potential or what? So, so that allows you to do it. That integral usually will take a, a little bit of work, even for as, as simple as a, a, a Coulomb potential. Okay. Some work to actually integrate it. But uh, I suppose the, um, I suppose we can talk about that. Yep. Yeah. This, this is what we've tried to find. What is known is the incident way. This is like, especially this case of zero, you know where it comes from. K sub zero k is a uh, wave number, so it's the momentum. Basically, x, x bar k is the momentum. You know the momentum of the incoming wave, or incoming particle. You know the k sub zero, you know the direction. What you want to find is uh, how much is scattered in a uh, given direction. And so this one will be measured, say, by a detector at a certain angle. And 
you so you repeat this experiment for many times, and then you you, you measure the the part number of particles at different angle, right? And that becomes a probability. So so that is what you want to compare with your experiment. So you want to calculate this. This is what you want to try to calculate, right? And so you don't want it to get into here. When you get into here, it becomes unknown. Because if you put it in here, everything depends on pi. All these are pi. All these are pi. You need to integrate that. That becomes too complicated. <laughs> right? That's uh, untractable. So the point approximation is basically saying that this term is small compared with the, the first term. So this is a zero order term. This is a first order term. So when you substitute this in the integral equation, you only keep that on the left hand side. But on the right hand side, this is an integral that involves supposedly a small potential or weak potential. And so this integral will supposedly produce a small perturbation. And so the, if you include that into here, that means that you have a small term multiplied by this small weak potential into the integral and that will result in a small term. And so, so we drop that. And so that's just called the first or first order perturbation. So you, of course uh, if you really want a more accurate uh, you can suppose a Google theory experiment might actually do that. You might actually solve it successfully. So once you solve that the first order term you put both back to the integral equation and do it one more time. Obviously that uh, that becomes more and more involved. Mm -hmm. But that will give you the second order. So, so this is just the, the first two order, you have the second order and so on. So um, you can do that and keep doing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the first order solution will Basically, the assumption is just use the incident wave in the integral and do the integration. So that would be this one. And that will give you the first order, supposedly, that will give you the first order solution. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but the, I mean, this is. Suppose it looks like just an illustration of the method rather than in, in, really integrating for a particular room. Okay. 